Sit back and relax, and we'll take you on a loop tour through Nevada's newest national monument, Gold Butte. We'll show you what there is to see and where to go to see it. Sandwiched between Lake Mead National Recreation Area, Grand Canyon National Park, and Grand Canyon Parashant National Monument, Gold Butte preserves a unique corner of the Mojave Desert. Similar to the Mojave National Preserve, 100 miles to its southwest, Gold Butte National Monument sets aside pristine desert scenery from human development. Along with its classic Mojave Desert scenery, Gold Butte is also known for its abundance of Native American rock art, including the well-known Falling Man petroglyph. Another one of its popular attractions is the unique area of intricate geological formations called Little Finland. Our tour is going to show you how to get to Gold Butte, what there is to see, and what the road conditions are like. Just like neighboring Grand Canyon Parashant, there are only dirt roads in this national monument, with the exception of one very bumpy paved road that comes in from Mesquite, Nevada. We'll start by driving through wide open and seemingly endless views on the way in. Then we'll stop and look at a collection of Native American rock art sites that are hidden among a maze of colorful sandstone. After that, we'll drive past more colorful rock formations at Whitney Pocket, drive on down to yet more colorful rock formations and see more rock art. Near here, we'll visit Little Finland, one of the craziest collections of rock formations around. When we get there, you'll see how it got its name. Down the road, we'll go on a hike through Red Bluff Spring and a unique narrow canyon cut into a conglomerate of mudstones. We'll then traverse the western side of the National Monument and see a lot of wild and open Mojave Desert scenery. Along this stretch of road, we'll go by another hiking opportunity called Lime Canyon. Next, we'll visit the mining town site of the National Monument's namesake, Gold Butte. There's not much left of the town here, other than some foundations, but there are some nice big granite outcrops that are reminiscent of Joshua Tree National Park. Finally, we'll head back to where we started, driving through, yes, you guessed it, more wide open desert scenery. Don't even think of trying to see this whole monument in a day. It will take at least two or three days, and even more if you spend a little time at each of the places of interest we've shown you. There are places to camp inside the monument, or the town of Mesquite is an hour's drive away with several hotels and eateries. The best time to visit Gold Butte is either in the spring or fall. Winter works too, depending on the weather, but we don't recommend visiting in the summer. It's just too hot. Let me show you how to get to Gold Butte using this map. From I-15, take exit 112, which is the Highway 170 Riverside Bunkerville exit. Exit 112 is about 70 miles north of Las Vegas and only 9 miles from Mesquite. After exiting, the road goes downhill for a few miles until you cross the Virgin River. Just after the bridge, turn right onto Gold Butte Road. This is the beginning of the paved road portion into the National Monument, which goes for 21 miles. Some people jokingly call this a rather spiritual road because it's very holy. I mean holes, potholes, and lots of them. So be careful when driving this road and pay attention. It's tempting to pick up speed on the good sections, but those potholes can sneak up on you and some are really big. Big enough to do some real damage to a vehicle and it's a long way to the nearest tow truck. 
This road was paved in the 1950s and, rumor has it that famous billionaire Howard Hughes was responsible. He used to own cattle property that is now part of the National Monument. The story goes that on one occasion, he was visiting his property with a group of his employees and, after traveling the long dirt road, he told one of them to have the road paved. There are no official county records of the road ever being paved, but somehow that 21 miles of road just magically became paved in the 1950s, and it has never been upgraded since. That's why it's in the condition it is. Clark County has been maintaining it on an annual basis ever since. But it's a tough job with so many potholes needing to be filled in. With a harsh desert environment, the road will continually deteriorate. While we're talking about roads, let's talk quickly about what type of vehicle you should be driving here. Naturally, any vehicle can tackle the beat-up paved road. But once you venture off the pavement, we recommend you use at least a high-clearance truck, SUV, or ATV. Four-wheel drive is not always necessary, but may come in handy in some spots, especially after a good rainstorm. And whatever vehicle you take, make sure it has all-terrain tires. If not, then you run the risk of getting a flat tire, or two, or three. Keep in mind that the Gold Butte area is very remote. There's next to no phone service here. Don't rely on using your phone if you get stuck. Keep in mind that a tow truck or other help has to come out from Mesquite and will be very expensive. You'll also want to bring plenty of drinking water and food to eat for a full day's outing. And along with everything I just said, make sure you have a full tank of gas too before heading down Gold Butte Road. There is one group of people that you can thank for the creation of Gold Butte National Monument and the ongoing stewardship of it. They are the Friends of Gold Butte. Their office and small visitor center is located in Mesquite, across the street from Virgin Valley Heritage Museum on the corner of Mesquite Boulevard and Yucca Street. If you plan on stopping at their visitor center, be sure to check and see if they're open. Because of their limited staffing, they don't keep regular hours. Check out their website at friendsofgoldbutte.org. These folks host hikes and other events out at the monument. Check their website for details. Consider clicking on the Donate Now button to help them out in a variety of ways. They're always looking for volunteers. If you make a donation or become a member, they will get you a quality map of the monument, such as the one you see me unfolding here. Also be aware that the Mesquite Welcome Center is staffed normally Friday through Mondays and carries information on Gold Butte, too. They are located on the east exit of I-15 at the corner of Sand Hill Boulevard and the northbound on-ramp of I-15. While we have the map out, let's discuss the overall route we'll take. This portion of our tour is on that paved road I discussed previously. We'll take it to a place called Whitney Pocket, where the pavement ends and the dirt road begins. Then, in a few miles past Whitney Pocket, we'll turn right and drive down Mud Wash and link up to a road that heads west. We'll pass by Little Finland while driving in Mud Wash as it heads towards Lake Mead, then make a 90-degree left turn to the south at Red Bluff Spring and begin driving south along the western portion of the monument. Along this portion of road, we pass by the Lime Canyon Wilderness Area and Lime Canyon. Our road comes to an end at the Gold Butte Town Site. Here we'll turn left and follow this road north back to Whitney Pocket. Once back on the pavement, we'll return home using that same wholly paved road we drove in on. Alright, let's get going on our tour. We'll start at the turnoff onto Gold Butte Road which is mile zero on our tour. 
So if you're keeping count, reset your trip meter here. The road parallels the Virgin River and goes by several ranches here for about six miles. Then turns left and climbs a gradual slope. At 10 miles, we reach the privately owned Juanita Springs, which is identifiable by a large Palm Spring oasis. This spring has been privately owned for decades, and the owners like their privacy, as you can see by the signs they have put up. Please be respectful. Just beyond the palms, you'll see a sign on the left. It was erected long ago by a rancher who got tired of having to help people who came to Gold Butte unprepared. His hopes were that this sign would discourage people from going any further. At about 12.5 miles, we reach the boundary of the monument, which is marked by this Gold Butte National Monument sign. Here, we'll also have a commanding view of the nearly 8,000 foot high Virgin Peak, which is the highest peak in the Virgin Mountains. Just over 14 miles in, you'll see this wide expansive view open up. You should be able to spot Lake Mead in the distance. The road to the right leads down to Fisherman's Cove. Before any road was built in this part of Nevada, this was the main north-south road, just like I-15. It was this road that a young Dwight D. Eisenhower traveled on around 1919 as an army major. Because it was never done before, it was his mission to test motor-driven military vehicles across the desert. His convoy eventually crossed the entire USA, averaging about 5 miles per hour. Gold Butte Road now crosses a very large alluvial slope known as a bajada that's made up of alluvium that has flowed down during thousands of flood events from the distant Virgin Mountains. This five mile stretch comes alive with color in the spring as desert plants thrive in the alluvium's loose soil. Even if the flowers aren't blooming, it's still a worthwhile stop to take a closer look at the diversity of desert plants found here. Usually, on bajadas like this, there's a higher concentration of these plants in the washes where they have access to more water. Find a safe place to pull over alongside the road, then take a walk up one of the washes towards the mountains. See what you can find. It's uncommon to find a place like this in the Mojave Desert, where so many indigenous plants grow in one place. At 19.7 miles, look for the dirt road that goes to the right. This is the road to the Falling Man Petroglyph and Archaeological Site. This area is also sometimes referred to as Black Butte or Luke Whitney Petroglyphs. Go down this road if you want to visit this site, but keep in mind that to fully enjoy it and see everything, you should plan on spending a half to full day just in this area. Yes, there's that much to see. The trailhead to Falling Man is reached at 21.6 miles, which is about two miles from the pavement. Many people come here to see the popular Falling Man petroglyph, but don't realize that there's a whole lot more to see here than Falling Man. First of all, this place is loaded with petroglyph panels. Falling Man is just one single petroglyph. Second, the rock formations here are very impressive and colorful. We've often compared them to popular scenic places on Utah's Colorado Plateau. There are all kinds of patterns and colors with bands of red, orange, and yellow running through them. There is a loop trail that is a little difficult to follow, but it takes you past Falling Man, many of the rock art panels, and through all of the rock formations. 
look for our upcoming video that focuses on this special corner of Gold Butte if it hasn't been released already. Subscribe to our YouTube channel so you won't miss it. Let's continue on the road past the Falling Man Trailhead. In a mile, we'll pass through a restoration and protected area for the sensitive Las Vegas bear poppy flower. When we came by here in April of 2017, we were lucky to find several plants that were brilliantly blooming, as you can see here. At about 1.3 miles, we turn left onto a road that goes up a wash. The road ends at a trailhead in a quarter of a mile. Up this wash, about a half a mile from the trailhead, is another Native American rock art panel. This one is called the 21 Goat Panel. As you head up, on the right is an old rancher's dam. In wetter years, you may find a small pond behind the dam. The walk up the wash is easy. You'll find the rock art panel on the left side of the wash on a cliff side. Along with drawings of 21 goats in a line, there are etches of other animals, mainly goats and other figures. All right, let's get back to Gold Butte Road and continue our journey. Back at the pavement, turn right. In one and a half miles, we reach Whitney Pocket. There's a junction here, and we're going to continue straight. On the right is a staging area for ATVs and restrooms. And on the left is a major road that heads east into Arizona's Grand Canyon Parishant National Monument. If you venture up the road on the left for a quarter mile or so, Look for an old rock cistern on the left. If you walk back into the small canyon here, you'll see an old dam built by the Civilian Conservation Corps, or CCC, during the Depression era of the 1930s. It almost resembles a very miniature version of nearby Hoover Dam. Interestingly, both were built in the 1930s and with a similar design. There are steps that lead to the top of the dam, but be very careful if you climb them. It's a high drop-off on both sides. The area around Whitney Pocket has its share of rock outcroppings and beautiful scenery that is slightly different than our last stop at Falling Man. If you take some time and look around, you might even find a natural arch or two. At this junction, when you're on Gold Butte Road, zero your trip meter, then head south. The road goes down a long gradual slope. Because the road is going downhill, it unfortunately accumulates a lot of washboard. So enjoy the bumpy ride. At 3.8 miles, we turn right onto Mud Wash North Road. The intersection is usually marked with a sign. This road twists and turns quite a bit as it meanders down a wash. Since the road is in a wash, be careful as there may be some ruts, rocks, and other obstacles along the way. At seven miles, the road will dump you onto the main Gold Butte Scenic Backway Loop Road as it turns to the west. At 10.8 miles, you'll pass by a large, brilliant orange sandstone outcropping. Pay close attention here on the right and look for several rock art panels up high and a unique USGS benchmark that is mounted vertically into the rock. This is a nice place to stop and stretch your legs as you look around and try to find the benchmark. Here's a hint, it's lower than the petroglyphs. All of the orange outcroppings you'll see here are the same reddish-orange sandstone that's found in Zion National Park. Over there, though, it's known as Navajo sandstone. Here in Nevada, that same sandstone layer is known as Aztec sandstone. Whatever you want to call it, these are petrified sand dunes 
that were formed during the Jurassic period about 180 million years ago and are the remains of what was a gigantic sand dune field. Just a few hundred feet before this point, a road heads north for half a mile, providing access to more of the sandstone. Here, you'll find some real sand dunes where the sandstone has literally turned back into sand. Heading down the road, in another mile, we'll pass an old corral on the right. Close by here, about a half a mile away, but not visible from the road, is one of the most popular destinations in Gold Butte, Little Finland. You can park here and walk to Little Finland, or what most people do is take a road further down that gets closer to it. Little Finland is an incredibly special place. See our separate virtual video tour that gives more details on how to get here and shows some of the spectacular, delicately shaped fins that have been formed out of the Aztec sandstone. Continuing down the wash, in 15.2 miles, we'll come across a fence that stops further travel down the wash. Here the road turns left out of the wash. But before we turn, let's park here and take a little two mile round trip hike down past Red Bluff Spring and into the unique slot canyon called the Mud Wash Narrows. It's easier to walk down the wash, but you can also find your way through the thick vegetation around the spring. Past the spring, Depending on the time of year you visit, you might run into some running water like we did, which adds to the delight of this little desert oasis. About a half mile into the hike, we pass by a road. Walking further, the canyon becomes narrower and, depending on how much water is present, you may come across some muddy sections like we did here. Also along here, we cross over the boundary between Gold Butte National Monument and Lake Mead National Recreation Area. Past the muddy section, the canyon becomes deep as we enter the Mudwash Narrows. As you can see, the water has created a slot canyon through a conglomerate of river rock. Be sure to check out the sides of the canyon with the many natural murals of colorful rounded stones that were cemented together here eons ago. Walk down the narrows as long as you like. They last for about another half mile. Then walk back the way you came in and return to your vehicle. Our road now heads south as it traverses the western side of Gold Butte National Monument. Now we're on a very remote stretch of road. Before tackling this stretch, make sure you have plenty of fuel and your vehicle is in tip-top condition. If you break down or get stuck out here, it is highly unlikely that there will be another vehicle to come along and help you and there's definitely no cell phone service out here. The road goes by more hills made of the orange Aztec sandstone and then through a lot of open desert landscape. There are a few short canyons and you'll see lots of Mojave Desert vegetation such as the classic Joshua tree and Mojave yucca. Don't be surprised if you run across a stray donkey wandering around, as we did here. Or if you run across what's called a guzzler alongside the road. At roughly 26.6 miles from Whitney Pocket, there is a large canyon on the right side of the road. This is Lime Canyon. A mile-long road leads off the road we're on to the mouth of the canyon. We're told this is a nice, secluded hike through a remote desert canyon. 
Finally, at almost 30 miles from Whitney Pocket on a long dirt road, we reached the Gold Butte town site. Gold was discovered here in 1905, and soon there was a gold rush. At its height, around 2,000 people lived near this intersection. The boom lasted a few years, and by 1910, the town's population dwindled. Two people continued living at Gold Butte, a rancher and a prospector, and they remained here for just over 40 years. They were both well-respected men in the region, and when they passed away, more than a hundred people came out to pay their respects. Their grave sites are within the small fenced-off area. The hills behind Gold Butte are unique to this area as they are made of granitic rocks. These granite hills are very similar to those found in Joshua Tree National Park and other places in the Mojave Desert. Located around the site are foundations of a few buildings, scattered pieces of mining equipment, and this rare aristra, which was used for grinding and crushing ore. It was carved out of a large granite boulder. Find the main road that heads north. This road now passes through the eastern portion of the monument and more vast desert scenery. At about 13 miles from Gold Butte, we'll take a road that goes to the left for about a quarter mile and leads to an interesting geologic feature, a sinkhole. Called Devil's Throat, within the last 80 years or so, this little patch of desert collapsed and created a big hole. It was caused most likely by water under the surface carrying away sediment, undercutting and weakening the ground above until it caused it to collapse. You'll notice the area is fenced off, which is for your own safety. The ground underneath the edge has been caving in and could collapse at any time. Respect the fence and enjoy the views we're providing here that were taken from our flying camera. When you're done looking at Devil's Throat, return to the road we drove on from Gold Butte and turn left to head north back to Whitney Pocket. At Whitney Pocket, we hit that decaying pavement again, and, even with its potholes, it feels pretty nice to be on some kind of pavement when you've been on a dirt road for such a long distance. Follow the road all the way back to civilization. We hoped you enjoyed our tour of Gold Butte National Monument. Don't forget to visit our website at backroadswest.com forward slash blog for more information on the trip you just watched, as well as the website for the Friends of Gold Butte. As always, we bid you happy exploring.